Welcome to this video which takes a look at how to install Langardian on a physical server. My name is Dara from Netfort. Now folks, this video is we're going to use a USB image to install Langardian onto a, an actual physical box. So what are we looking to do? Well, we've got a physical server. Main requirement with this is it's got two network cards, which you can see here. We want to connect it into our core switch because we're going to set up a span or mirror port on that. And then we're going to cable in a management interface, just like any other server you have in your network. You need to cable it in somewhere and give it an IP address. And the second cable we're going to put on is what we call a spam port. Now, spam port is the same as any other port. It's just on the switch you'll configure that port to be a spam port. And that's connected into the second interface on LangGuardian. So this is what we're trying to achieve is to get these two cables connected into the network. Now the bigger picture here is that here is our box with the two network cards and we can see here it's going to our core switch. Now with the spam port what we can do is if we want to monitor what people are accessing on servers, what they're accessing on the internet, or if you want to just get a visibility about security threats or issues that you have in your network, the spam port is a tremendous data source. So let's now move on and take a look at what's required and have a look at the installation process. So let's talk about your hardware requirements. First, you need a server. Now I've got a small little mini PC here, but crucially it's got two network cards. <clears throat> so on your physical server, you absolutely got to have two network cards. And um, spec this is reasonable, it's got four gigabytes of memory, it's got a decent uh, Intel processor. It doesn't need any operating system or anything like that, it's just blank. Um, Disk-wise, maybe 100 gigabytes. So two network cards, the crucial piece. Then we need access to a switch. Okay, tiny little switch here, a couple of ports. But what you need is access to a managed switch. Something which allows you to set up a span or mirror port. And then it's just a simple matter. Got, you need two network cables. Um, on the server, figure out which are even, it's probably labeled, which is port one and which is port two. It could be zero and one or one and two. So what you want to do is put the management cable into port one or port zero, whatever the first network card is, and plug that in somewhere on your network. Okay, so you should be able to, once you assign an IP address, you should be able to ping that. The second cable on your server, we call it the sensor port. It's just a regular Ethernet port. That then goes back to your core switch or wherever you want to set up your spam port. There's no special ports that are used just for span alone. You can plug into any port. But on the switch, we're going to configure that as a span or mirror port. So, got your two cables. It's turned into a bit of a spaghetti junction here, but we've got our two cables. We've got our management port. We've got our sensor port. And they're connecting back to my switch. And later on, then I'm going to set up span or mirroring on this switch. So that's the actual physical requirements. And lastly, of course, we need a USB stick. Now I'm going to show you how you can create the bootable media. It's coming up next in the video. Once you got your bootable media created, you just need to plug in here to some USB port. And when you boot up the server, just choose the option then to boot from USB stick. And then we can go through the process just a couple of minutes after that and get LangGuardian installed. So let's get LangGuardian installed. So to get the installation media, go to netfor.com. Just click on the download button and once you complete the form you can choose from three versions here. The one I'm interested in is the USB image. I want to put it onto that USB stick I showed you earlier. So I download it uh, by clicking on the button here. And then if I go to the create installation, installation media guide, it explains how to put it on the USB flash drive. Now it does mention a third party tool. There's a link to it here, which is the Win32 disk imager. Now I've already downloaded that and I have it installed. It's a simple app. All we need to do is click the open folder option here, then find where you've downloaded LangGuardian to. So here's my image file that I downloaded. And then you need to select the USB drive. So I've just got one in at the moment, so there it is. And simply click on write. So it tells me it's going to overwrite the one that's there, which is fine. I see it flashing. So <clears throat> that takes uh, less than a minute. 
And what you need to do once this is complete is take that USB stick, put it in your server, and when the server's starting up, either you press F12, F2, whatever it is, pick um, the to boot from the USB stick, and that will kick automatically kick off the Inland Guardian installation, which we're going to come on to next. So now I need to take this USB stick and put it into um, plug it into one of the USB ports on my server. So the boot up is complete, and it's now prompting me to go to my browser at the IP address. So let's do that. So we go to 10.101.201. And we complete the installation by going through this configuration wizard. So tick a box, agree to licensing terms. It's just double checking network settings. Main thing it's looking out for is if, can it connect to the internet? It does need to download regular updates for intrusion detection, uh, reports, software updates. So it's important that it has access to the internet. So it has confirmed that it does. If you use proxy, you can set that here as well. It's going to go next. So what it's doing here now is it's checking the sensor. So remember back when I was doing my cabling, I connected my, uh, the, I can't remember the color cable, but I connected the second interface into my core switch, and on that I set up a spam port. Now, if you want to learn more about spam ports, go to netfor.com. Just in the search, just type in uh, spam ports, so you'll get those free tools for setting them up. And there's information about if you want to monitor the internet, you know, how, how do you set up a spam port to monitor internet activity, for example. Now, what this graph here is telling me is that, yes, I am getting some data in on my uh, SYN support. A small amount, but nonetheless, it's data coming in, so that's good. That's what I want to see. Press finish. Okay, so let's log on. The default passwords administrator I recommend you change that when you log on for the first time. So I'm now logged on, and I can see we're processing data. Now, if you don't see any information on your dashboards, just leave it running for a couple of minutes and you should start to see data appear. I've got two alerts up here. So one is informing me that um, new IDS signatures have been downloaded, which is good. The second is the fact that it's my Active Directory or the identity module isn't configured and it's prompting me to configure now. If you have Active Directory, I would recommend you do that. So you just click on configure now and click add domain, put in a username and password, IP address to main controller. That's pretty much it. Just make sure you've got um, user logon auditing enabled. It should be by default unless you switched it off, but we that's what we need for the Active Directory um, integration to work. So looks like I'm up and running. I'm processing data. So what, on our YouTube channel, there is a video which uh, takes a look at creating dashboards, modifying dashboards, just a kind of a general walk around of the Langardian GUI and you know how you can run ports and customize systems to match your own requirements. But that's it for this video. We're up and running. If you have any questions about getting Langardian installed or about setting up spam ports on particular type of switches that you use, just go to our website, nefer.com, click on the contact us option. You have links there to our forum where we answer the you know, most common questions people have. And if you want to ask a question, you can look at our contact details. You've got email support, you've got chat facility there. So please get in contact and we'll try and answer your question.